What did you see from quarterback Anthony Richardson when you were in Gainesville? It's, it's, it's good seeing it on TV. So, I, you know, he in Florida, he right down the street. So you see it on TV. But then when you see him in person, I saw him at the combine, but I really got a chance to see him at the pro day. When you see him in person, you're like, God, Lee, this dude really is built like LeBron James. You know, like I can tell he's built like LeBron James, but when you actually see him in person, like 6'5", 240, low percent body fat, and can move the way he moves, and he got that flick of the wrist. So when you see him go inside that dome at the practice facility, and he just he ain't even putting his arm in it already. He just flicking his wrist. Like, man, he flicking his wrist 60-something yards. And then when you see him move all the way to his left side and throw it across his body all the way over to the right side at the flick of the wrist, you're like, he different. So every, every, every box that I needed to check, especially with my eyes, I saw it in person. Then when he hit the top of the dome, not even trying to hit the top of the dome, you're like, man, this dude here just, he's very impressive. But all his teammates love him. Whether they're teammates his age or younger teammates, young wide receivers who was running routes for him, they all love him. So he just got a, he got a natural leadership vibe. And that's, that's what I look at. I already know what he can do on the field, but I look at how do your teammates talk with you? Do they like being around you? Are you staying offish? Or are you just one of the boys? AR is just one of the boys. So when you're just one of the boys, but you happen to be that good, it calms the, the, it calms the scene down for everybody else to just play football and have fun. So the kid was very, I'm sorry, the young man was very impressive, Mark, from, from, from throwing the ball to interacting with his teammates, to just calming everybody down who wasn't invited to the combine and just making the atmosphere real fun. That that's that was one of the things that impressed me about A.R. Anthony Richardson, Mark. I, let me give you my take. If he's there at number five when the Seahawks pick, I've seen a lot of mock drafts say, oh, the Seahawks need an edge rusher. I think they take him. Yeah. Because yeah, Geno and- Smith is there and he can learn from under Geno Smith. Yeah. If Anthony Richardson is there at number five, you're setting yourself up for success because Geno Smith did what he did, got the Seahawks team into the playoffs. When a quarterback like an Anthony Richardson is ready, he can then take you over the top, almost like what the Chiefs did with Mahomes and so forth. I know the Seahawks have other needs. That is just my take and how I read this for everything I've read about Anthony Richardson. Hey, Mark, get the hell out of my head. Because that's exactly (laughs) what I was saying on the the pro day. I was talking to some, some other guys. I was like, the perfect fit would be the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Gino just did a three-year deal. Gino well deserved getting his money. Mm-hmm. Um, but letting AR sit, and we talk about injuries as well. Injuries are a part of the game, so you just never know. You have a guy on his style of play, and Coach Pete Carroll know exactly what to do with that kind of style of play. He won the Super Bowl and been the two with Russell Wilson. Um, also, if you just look at the offseason moves the Carolina Panthers are making. I did see the Carolina Panthers present as well. I did talk to the quarterback coach for the Carolina Panthers, um, a guy I used to play with. But at the at the same time, Mark, you know, you got your running back, you got you a tight end, and you got your receiver coming out of free agency. So you got you a Miles, you got Adam Thielen, and you got the tight end from uh, I want to say. And what a tight end we got, the Carolina Panthers got. Stand by, I, I can get that. But the Panthers trading up for the top pick as well in the tra- trade with the Bears. And to me, it's the signing of Dalton that allows you the flexibility of to say, if we have to start the Red Rifle week one of the 2023 season, we can do that. And the young quarterback can learn underneath, insert him when he's ready. If you just want Andy Dalton in the room and to say, Andy, you're going to be the Dal- the backup, the number one pick, we'll start week one right away. You can do that too. Uh, Hayden Hurst, Ike, I believe is the tight end you're thinking of. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Mark. But yeah, you when you – and Carolina will have some options at this quarterback. You, you know you got CJ, you got AJ, I me, mean, CJ, AR, and I'm missing one. Um, Levis, Levis out Levis. of Kentucky. 
Levis, and I'm missing another one too. It's it's, it's Bryce it's, Young. It's, yes. So they 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 got options on who they think that can fit their system and that they can have. So, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't exclude I wouldn't exclude AR coming out of that uh that hat with the quarterback options. But the perfect fit, Mark, in my mind, is Seattle. Yeah, yeah. I like I would see here's Jace already, I think top number one overall pick. I think Young can have success if he has a stud offensive line in front of him, given his size limitations, because they say, well, what about Russell Wilson and Drew Brees? Those are the exception, not the norm when it comes to smaller quarterbacks. If you have a stud line in front of him, if Bryce Young were 6'4", 220, he'd be the top pick, no doubt in my mind. Richardson, I think, would benefit from sitting and learning from a veteran quarterback for the first several weeks, if not the entire first year. But I think Richardson has the highest ceiling. And I wouldn't sleep on Levis, too, if he goes to the right team, Ike, because I go back to the 2020 draft when Burrow was coming out, Tua was coming out. No one's talking about Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert had a cannon arm. Levis needs to go to the right system to where he has weapons around him. But that, to me, is the pathway for success for each of these quarterbacks. It's a lot more about fit than okay, what abilities does this quarterback bring? It, it's organizational fit, it's coaching, it's personnel that you're going to surround the rookie with, whether or not that player has success. Just so my I like, opinion. All right, I feel you. So I like it. I like to take it a deep, uh, 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 a little deeper. Great coaches evolve with their personnel. Good coaches say, this is my system. You got to learn my system. I know nothing else. So when you have a Andy Reid, a Sean McVay, a Kyle Shanahan, to be like, you know what? This is my style of quarterback. So I have to adjust my offense around this guy. And if you look at Andy Reid, Andy Reid, Reid uh, went from Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick, went to the playoffs when he got to KC with Alex Smith, found out he had a stud in Patrick Mahomes, and adjusted everything to it. When you look at a Sean McVay who – acquires a Matthew Stafford off of a trade one year wins the Super Bowl that same year so when a uh, Kyle Shanahan who's always the past couple of years been in the NFC championship working on his third quarterback with Brock Purdy damn they're going to the Super Bowl so yes people like to say you have to fit my system great coaches who evolve even though they might not like their that personnel on that style, they say, you know what? Let me adjust my playbook to this style of quarterback. And these are the people who just keep rotating and recycling NFC, AFC championship, Super Bowls. So if you don't have a if you don't have a head coach or OC who can evolve to that style of player, yeah, they'll make the playoffs, but they'll never win the Super Bowl. When you have the Andy Reeds, the Cows, the Kyle Shanahan's, and the Sean McVay's who evolve to their personnel, them guys just keep uh, Joe Burrow. Them guys just keep evolving, and we continue for the past three years seeing the same teams every year going to the AFC Championship, the NFC Championship, even Philadelphia Eagles. Philly was like, you know what? We got to evolve. We I, I have to change my style for Jalen Hurts, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get him five bodyguards certified, to make sure he can he can throw when he wants to throw, he can run when he wants to throw, run. I got to evolve my playbook towards this guy, Jalen. So when you got coaches like that, Mark, you got coaches who will forever put their team and their organization into Super Bowl contentions. When you don't, when you say this is just my style, I don't care what kind of, I don't care about your athletic ability. This is just what it is. You got to do my playbook. Yeah, you're going to make the playoffs. But you'll never get to that AFC, that NFC championship, hopefully to the Super Bowl.